Hallelujah, Jesus. And this week again, we thank God that um, Easter is here. And I just want to share about the seven voices, the seven utterances of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was hanging on the cross. And this is the message of Easter. And as we continue celebrating his death, his resurrection, these voices make meaning in our lives. And because Jesus came to redeem mankind, he broke, came to die, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. You remember the Passover that we have talked about over and over again, and we read it in our word, in our Bible, uh, when the Israelites had it to sacrifice and they were saved because of the blood that had been smeared on their doorposts. And now this time, we concentrate on the seven voices. And I just want to mention them and the lessons that we can pick from there as Christians because they mean a lot in our life. Now, voice number one is quoted from Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And this voice, our Lord Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross. He began by saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, for they do not know what they do. That's one voice. It may not come in the order that it was, but at least it was one of the voices in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Now Jesus was hanging up and he must have looked at the soldiers that scourged him. He must have looked at the soldiers that beat him. He must have looked at people that spat on him. He must have looked, he must have remembered Caiaphas, you know, the high priest. He must have remembered Pontius Pilate. He must have also remembered Peter, the one that denied him three times. And he remembered all those and says, Father, forgive them. He did not react angrily, but his heart was flowing with forgiveness. And Jesus also must have forecast, must have looked up beyond and looked at us, you and me, and says, Father, forgive them. Because there are many, many things that we do that sometimes, you know, that take us to the other side, but he says, forgive them. And so Jesus preaches forgiveness. Remember in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 of as we say the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. He taught forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 following, Jesus mentions forgive. When Peter had asked, when my father, when my brother sins against me, how many times? And he says, forgive 70 times, seven times. He had also taught forgiveness by forgiving the adulterous woman. You remember the woman in John chapter 18, chapter 8, he says, I mean, he forgave the woman and who had been brought to be stoned before Jesus. And then Jesus says, forgive if you have an adversary. If you have something against your brother or your sister, forgive them. And so Jesus preaches forgiveness. And this season is a season that actually you have to preach forgiveness. You have someone that you need to forgive, go back and forgive. Because God is a forgiving God. And our Lord Jesus Christ looked at them and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Voice number two. Jesus utters in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, and says, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. You remember the two thieves, one thief on the right, on the left, another one on the right. And then Jesus, the one on the, on the left, the Bible says, was shouting at Jesus that you saved others. Can you, for, can you also save us? Save yourself and save others as well. But the other one on the left, on the right, this one here on the right says, hey, you, don't you fear God? At least for us, we have a case to answer. But this man, innocent as he is, he has been crucified along with us. Don't you fear God? And then turned to Jesus and says, remember me, remember me. And now here is when Jesus makes a statement that truly I said to you today, you will be with me in paradise. And so now this is what happens, that a criminal but repented on the cross, the one on the right, and when he says, remember me, he was forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the forgiving Lord? While the other one, who's called Jesus, who shouted at Jesus, actually, we know that there are people who have rough tongues. And so to the repentant criminal, Jesus promised paradise. To a repentant sinner, Jesus gives paradise. And so blessed are the merciful, for they shall be ob obtaining mercy. The Bible says so. Remember this other criminal on the cross saying, actually pleading 
with other criminal up for Jesus. And so his mercy was blessed. And so friends, this offers us hope. This has offers us opportunity for salvation. There's nobody beyond salvation. Even on the cross, even on your deathbed, even wherever, just come. The Lord Jesus Christ is calling you to salvation. This criminal on the cross, before he died, paradise was waiting for him. So we need to turn our hearts. This is when this voice shows us that we need to turn our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, remember me. And I cry, O oh Lord, remember me. You also need to cry, Lord, remember me. And the Lord Jesus Christ will pronounce today, not another day, but today, the present time. And we thank God for this voice that Jesus had on the cross. Verse number three, Jesus said to his mother, in John chapter 19, verse 26 to 27, the, they, they say, he called her, woman, this is your son. And then he said to the disciple who was near there, this is your mother. That's another voice. Now at the cross, like at Cana of Galilee, Jesus calls his mother woman. And he remembers the woman in Genesis chapter 3 that fell there. And now he was addressing his mother that way. And we shall not go into those details, but at least he made a statement on the cross that Jesus' mother was there and she was going to remain alone. And so Jesus makes a statement to the disciple that was standing next to him. This is your mother. And he showed the mother, now this is your son. Because Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was one of the providers. He was a provider son, the first son, and now he was gone. And so he left John to be in charge to take care of the mother. So Jesus cares for the loved ones, for the people that he loves. Remember, he cares. He cared for his mother. He cared for his people. He cares for us. Now we are called upon, friends, my brothers, take care of the people that are in your house. Take care of everyone that is around you. If you are able, Jesus was able and he did. He did not just leave them in a hopeless situation, but at least he entrusted someone. Now, will you be there, daddy, mommy, you no? Know, elder brother, elder son, whoever you are, caring for one another is the point that we're making here. Jesus was caring for his mother here. Although he was going, but he looked back and said, no, 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 I shouldn't leave this woman uh, in trouble, lonely, but I needed to say, young man, you know, disciple, this is your mother. And so this is the point that I'm trying to make here. Uh, this is the point that I'm driving at here for you to take very, very seriously. Voice number four is in Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, and in Mark chapter 15, verse 34. Jesus shouts and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These two, this voice is quoted by Matthew 27, 46, Mark 15, 34. This, he said it at the ninth hour, and it is the only expression that is quoted in Matthew and Mark. The rest are quoted by Luke and John. Mark and Matthew quote the same one. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it was an anguish tone. It was the tone of anguish. It was trouble in Jesus' heart. And he felt separated. He felt alone. Like many times suffering comes and we felt alone, we have felt disturbed. We have felt like we are lonely. And so he referred to Psalm 22 that we read, why have you forgotten, forsaken me? My God, my God. It was a tone of being forsaken. And many times we all human beings, this is the human nature that we suffer, that we can cry, that we can look up and say, oh God, why is this? And someone can ask, why me? Why me? And things like that. Because of the skin, because of the flesh, and you feel, you know, troubled. And so Jesus was troubled at heart and said, my father, my father, my God, why have you forsaken me? But this is a, 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 a tone of, you know, anguish because of the human nature, which all of us go through. And the voice number five is quoted by John chapter 19, verse 28, and the Bible says, he cried, I thirst. I thirst. This is the only human expression. Thirst compared to the Samaritan woman, you remember when Jesus was giving her, I mean, at the well, there was a thirst there, and Jesus says, the water that I give, you take, 
and nobody, I mean, you not feel thirsty again. But here, it is a human condition. Jesus is dried up, he had been beaten, blood had been drained, water has flowed, and everything was. So he said, I am thirsty. And so, um, Jesus, Jesus is thirst. Our interpretation, Jesus thirsts for our souls. Jesus thirsts for your life. Jesus thirsts for eternal love, for eternal life. Jesus thirsts for your love. He thirsts for us. He thirsts for our lives. And salvation is what brought him. And so when he says, I thirst, here, it was actually water, yes. And here, he also thirsts for you. And so voice number five that I'm bringing to you, I'm about to finish with the last two, is that I thirst is another voice that he is. So he thirsts for you and me. And may we offer ourselves that the Lord Jesus Christ will feel good about us, will feel happy about us, will receive us in the name that he has provided, which is our salvation. Now, voice number six is when Jesus had received wine, remember, they gave him some drink on the cross there in John chapter 19, verse 30. John 19, 30, and the Bible says that he said it is finished. That's another voice. It is finished. So he bowed his head and died. Now, carrying a sense of accomplishment here, you've done good work. It is finished. Pray the Lord. You've done something nice and you feel you have swept the house and it's all done. So it is finished. Have you prepared the food? And it is ready. Just invite people. People, it is finished. It's accomplishment. And Jesus had accomplished the mean the mission. He handed over his spirit. It is he who handed over himself. He didn't, he didn't go agonizing and struggling. He said, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. The Bible says so. He, and so Christians, when we are departing from this life, we finish our race. We finish our race. And so you will finish your race. I will finish my race. But how shall we, shall we finish it? How will you finish it? Now Jesus Christ, it is finished. And he finished the job well done. Now work. Do your work and finish it well. Husband, do your work. Wife, do your work. Son, do your work. Daughter, do your work. And finish it well. Let us aim at good finishing. And so that we are it will be accomplishment. And I enjoy it. That when you talk about being an accomplished preacher, being an accomplished teacher, being an accomplished husband, being an accomplished officer, finish your work. Accomplishment. And Jesus teaches us this. And finally, the voice that comes finally is Jesus Christ cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit, I commend my spirit. Luke 23, verse 46. Now, he directed his heart, his life, his spirit to the Father. Now, Psalm 31, verse 5, quoted variously and all the time, I quote, it, I quote it many times and say, into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. Into your life, O God, I commit my life. And so Jesus committed that. Now, when the centurion at the cross saw this, he said, certainly this man was innocent. It is because he saw everything flowing and flowing very, very planned in manner. And Jesus was very, very intentional in everything that he did. And our God was intentional and we are called upon to be intentional. That actually, even when people accuse you falsely, there should be someone who will say, no, 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 this man is innocent. Even when it has happened otherwise, continue doing good. Continue doing faithful work. And someone will testify and say, this is a good man. But the voice that I'm talking about here is, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And so that actually, at the end, you also commit your life to Jesus Christ. You commit your spirit into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus this, Jesus does this, it's spelling his relationship with his father because he calls him father into your hands. I commit my spirit. My friends, these seven voices have a lot that they teach us and this is in summary, voice number one, father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Voice number two that I gave you is truly, I said to you, today you'll be with me in the paradise. Voice number three is Jesus said to his mother, woman, this is your son, and to the disciple, this is your mother. That is a caring statement. Number four, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Quoting Psalm 22. And then 
that the other voice is, I thirst. Jesus thirsts for you. Come and receive salvation. Voice number six, which I gave you, when Jesus received the wine, he said, it is finished. It was an accomplishment. Do your work and finish well. And finally, Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And so may we have a relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And life comes. And may God bless you during these Easter celebrations. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <music>